Happy Chinese New Year. Let's talk about food. Yes, food is how Chinese people celebrate. To Chinese people, food is never just food. Food is an integral part of our culture. It can be funny. Or romantic. Or sexy. Or scientific. Or even dangerous. Today, we'll take a look at examples of food in Chinese cinema. See beyond the appearance and talk about the philosophy and meanings behind. So, let's dig in. Our first dish of the day will be wonton, from Wong Kar Wai's seminal film, In the Mood for Love. Set in 1960s Hong Kong, the film tells the story of two neighbors, Mrs. Chen and Mr. Chow, whom their spouses are cheating on them with each other. Chow and Chen find solace by befriending each other, amid gossips and moral judgments. In the film, we repeatedly see Mrs. Chen going out for wonton noodles. It hints at the constant absence of her husband. He's not home, so she's not cooking. On her journey, she often passes by Mr. Chow, who is out dining alone for the same reason. In here, wonton serves as a replacement for love and comfort. It's a comfort food that fulfills the desire to be with the spouses and enjoy the dinner like a family. A food to stop hunger and loneliness. It is at their emotionally most vulnerable, these two cross paths. At the beginning of the friendship, they hang out in western diners, where they can each have their own dishes, proper space is maintained, very deliberately. But as the intimacy crosses the line, the food of choice reverts back to wonton noodles. Only this time, they are sharing. Through food, we see how these two go from strictly platonic to extramarital romance. In this one shot, we see that they are sharing comfort with each other, effectively replacing the absentee spouses with each other. Food is much more than just food. Our second dish is barbecue pork rice. from Stephen Chow's comedy classic, God a Cookery. In the film, Chow plays a famous cook and food critic, nicknamed the God of Cookery. High and mighty, he finds flaws in any and all food. And he finds flaws in any and all human. It's only when his business partners all betrayed him, when he lost everything, when he has to sleep on the street, that he finds the most delicious food ever, a humble bowl of barbecue pot rice, offered to him for free. In real life, Stephen Chow is of grassroots origins. He spent over a decade working as extras and minor characters. To him, barbecue pot rice probably have a very special meaning, as it is typically the lunch for working class people. 
But then in the 90s, he got a starring role on TV. And he practically became an overnight sensation. In just a few short years, he became the undisputed king of comedy in Hong Kong. Perhaps at that moment, there was this human connection he felt was lost to him. In the world of the rich, everyone is all business. In the world of the rich, food looks glamorous, but tastes terrible. It just so happened that Chow's life mirrors that of Hong Kong. Starting from the 70s, Hong Kong saw a massive economic upturn. By the 90s, Hong Kong has cemented its status as the financial center of East Asia. Everyone's topic of discussion was money. Everyone in Hong Kong wanted to ride away and be rich. Human relations was replaced with cold hard cash. But barbecue pork rice is fulfilling, it's comforting. It reminds people of days where money can be earned by hard work. It's filled with longing and nostalgia for the simpler time. It connects Chow with his grassroots friends. A pure connection, not tainted by money or power. Where people are free to be, where gestures of goodwill have no ulterior motives. When his character returns to a cooking competition to right his wrong, his opponent prepared a dish called Buddha Jumping Wall. It's said to contain so many rare and expensive ingredients, even nearby monks have to jump over the wall to take a look. An expensive treat for the upper class. And Chow's character, having learned his lesson, prepare his own food, the best dish he has ever had, a working class meal. Our final dish of the day is egg fried rice. From the film, The Story of David. The story of David is, in short, the Chinese forest gum. In the film, David is a slow-witted cook, whose great-grandfather was rumored to be an imperial chef. Going through life, David only wants two things. To get together with the love of his life, and to have his own place where he can cook his egg fried rice. The simplest dish in Chinese cuisine. Despite times are changing drastically, he lives by his father's advice. Things has to be done slowly. In a deliberate social commentary on current Chinese trend, everybody around David is desperate for success. Some lose their lives in the chase, Others choose to betray David, hoping to reach a shortcut to fame and wealth. But David's single-minded devotion eventually earns him everything he wishes for. When those who betray him live a life of success, they are also living in fear and struggle. Their lifetime of dirty deeds haunts them. And just when they are falling from the top, David finally reaches the top. It took David 30 years, but he was able to recreate the imperial egg fried rice from his family's legend. 
，真好吃。Every grain of rice is separated, evenly coated by a layer of egg. 你花了多长时间学会的？我差不多三十年。Like David, egg fried rice is simple. To many, it lacks the glamour people desire. But Chinese people believe it is the simplest thing in life that is the most difficult. It's a family legacy. It's David's faith. It represents happiness, something that has to be earned, and has to be earned slowly, one step at a time. To Chinese people, food is never just food. It means much, much more. It can be the way people fall in love. It is seen as important as sex. To a point. Or it can manipulate people's behavior. But my favorite portrayal of food is in Ang Lee's Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. In the film, the elderly father has been cooking for his three daughters as a way of family bonding. As his daughters grow up and begin to leave the family behind. The old father finds it hard to adjust, but one daughter decides to stay behind and maintains the family tradition. So she prepares the dinner for him. The joy of this old grumpy father experiences when he gets to taste the food she made is nothing short of breathtaking. Yeah. Food in Chinese culture is much more than just food.